Yes. We've gone off the deep end. Good day everyone, Loki here. Yeah, so Call of Duty has decided that they have had enough. It's season three, realism out of the window. You can now be bunnies in the multiplayer if you want to, as well as Warzone, of course. So yeah, there goes your, ooh, everyone is a realistic soldier dude man game. To be fair, I'd like to think that Call of Duty never really is about the realism. I mean, from the very get-go, there were skins that literally vaporized your enemies with all kinds of bullet trails. But this is still the next level. This is kind of like the Attack on Titan skin that we had inside of Call of Duty Vanguard, which the Attack on Titan skin might have been a little bit worse because it was a huge, like, naked man running around. It's still definitely up there as far as weirdness goes. Also, Easter has passed, so this skin has kind of released a little bit too late, but I guess Guess that's just because everything was delayed for the previous season so obviously the bunnies are my highlight but there is also content in season three they got the new fjx imperian intervention style sniper rifle which i've played a little bit with i think it is the fastest zooming sniper rifle currently in the game and that is even without me putting too many attachments on it so that is definitely a very good thing but i haven't really played enough with it to give you a big review i suppose of it the other weapon that they released is the Cronin Squall Battle Rifle, which I have played a little bit more with. It's kind of more like an assault rifle of sorts, like an heavy assault rifle with 20 bullets in it. Uh, you can, of course, put a drum mag under it to make it 50 bullets and probably make it zoom in very, very slowly. The biggest thing that you run into with the Cronin Squall Battle Rifle is that it is actually a little bit on the slow side, and because it is on the slow side, if you are playing against people that all have SMGs or have actually put their assault rifles to have quick zoom ins with their laser sights and their grips then you kind of stand no chance unless you are already zoomed in uh, you also don't have a very high aim down sight movement speed so aim like while you aim walking it's pretty slow as well so it's not the best weapon it's all right Season 3 also brings two new maps, the first one being the Lighthouse, which is this map that is all based around this middle central building, which I don't think is the Lighthouse. I'm pretty sure it is just a building, and it actually is kind of modeled like the Modern Warfare 2 estate building, which is fun. You will definitely be able to find your way around it, although there is a basement level that I don't remember, but I think estate had a basement level as well, and I just never really went in there. But you will definitely recognize it if you played Modern Warfare 2 back in 2009. There isn't really too much to say about this map other than that it is pretty large for 6v6, which you will definitely notice a lot of running around, especially when the spawns decide to stick you into one of the two separate sides, uh, which means that you get to run for a very extended period of time before you get back into the battle. And then because the middle central part of the map is this building, you're gonna die again because they have the power position. Of course, if you're good, you're not gonna die. But there is a very big likelihood that there will be an enemy in one of the various windows that's overlooking your side, or they are holding one uh, either the left side or the right side, that you're going to die, and then you're going to respawn back on your side of the island, and you get to do the run all over again. The flow is a little bad, especially if you're playing Domination or Team Deathmatch, but if you do get a mode like Hardpoint, it does seem to play pretty nicely, especially because then, of course, the spawns are a little bit more directed into one of the two sides of the map, so I guess because of that, the map that plays all right, but especially if you're playing TDM or Domination, it is so far a pretty mediocre map. Also, there are these large rain droplets that drop onto your screen, and they are a little obnoxious. I must say, it is a bit more difficult to actually see your enemy, especially if you're trying to quickly turn around because you're being shot in the back. It becomes very hard to identify where your enemy is when there's also rain droplets hitting your screen. Of course, that's just me complaining. It's fine. It's just something to dress up the map, but I'm not the biggest fan, I suppose. The other map introduced is called Black Gold, and is actually a night vision mode map, which we haven't seen since Modern Warfare 2019. And I'm actually kind of excited for it. I like night vision goggle mode, NVG mode in Modern Warfare 2019. And sadly, they never really expanded upon that mode. They introduced it, they were pretty excited about it, and then they never did anything with it again. And that was largely also, of course, because the player base wasn't too much into the night vision mode. So I don't blame them. I still very much believe that it would be a nice addition to change a bunch of day maps into night maps. And of 
course, if you introduce a night map like this, to still have a day version of it so that you can keep both player bases happy and then just kind of mix things in there or make a dedicated playlist so that there is a night vision goggle mode because it plays really nicely. Of course, the quirks that you have the canted laser sights if you aren't using a two times, three times scope is a thing here. So if you aren't ready for that, that might be a little bit weird. But there's just something so fun about seeing all the laser sights all across the map of everyone aiming down sight and everyone looking around when you are playing this mode. I do think they have made it a little bit less dark though, because there is a lot of reports from people that they are able to just turn off the night vision goggles and then still be able to see. And I don't know if that's because of the engine or what they did, or maybe it is a little bit brighter outside. But for me personally, it is completely dark and I can't see anything out there unless I'm using the night vision goggles. Like I said, I've really enjoyed myself with this map. Would I play this all the time? Probably not. Of course, the real question is going to be if you find this map in your regular matchmaking, because I'm, I doubt that they will keep a 24-7 playlist for just a singular map that is night vision goggles because you know shipment needs to be there instead are you going to leave the matchmaking if you run into the night vision goggle mode map that is the real question because based on that this will either be a thing they'll look into doing more or they're gonna do it less i still think it's very nice that they have made a dedicated map for this because then they can design the flow all around the night vision goggle mode and that plays pretty good from what i've played so far before we get into the big controversial $30 battle pass thing, you know what's free? Liking and subscribing. Oh god, that felt terrible. Am I a YouTuber now? The $30 fancy battle pass. Let's wind it back first. So there were two types of battle passes. You can either buy the normal battle pass for roughly a thousand cod points, or you could buy the fancy battle pass for 2400 cod points, which came down to about 20 bucks. So you had a 10 buck version, $10, 10 euros, and you had a 20 buck, 20 euro, $20 version. And they were both for Call of Duty points in the game, which meant that if you got cod points back from the battle pass, you could go and spend them on the battle pass and go from there. The 20 tier skip version, essentially the 20 euro version, uh, and 25 tier skips if you on PlayStation, was a way for you to quickly get the new weapons in the new battle pass, and it was alright. I didn't always pick it up, sometimes I did because I felt like it, but it was alright. Anyway, they removed the 20 tier skip version uh, from the game <laughs> in the way that it was right now. You can no longer buy that for 2400 con points. You can now buy that for 30 euros, which is a money-only purchase that you can do in the PlayStation Store or in the Steam store or on the Xbox store. It's a money only purchase and you do get a couple of con points with it. You essentially get 10 euros worth of con points and you get the battle pass and you get the tier skips and you get some other unique rewards which makes this very very rude. Now with season three, you have three levels of battle pass. You have, you didn't buy a battle pass. You only get a couple of rewards in the free track. Go enjoy, please buy the battle pass from the perspective of the developer. Then you have the battle pass, which you buy for a thousand con points in game. And then you have the battle pass. Congratulations. And then you have the $30 you have bought it for real money battle pass, which gives you everything from the battle pass, but then also every single character skin has a second version that is in this black and gold, which looks cool. <laughs> of course, that's subjective. It also starts you at the top of the battle pass, which means that only one segment away from where you started. To the left, you have the new battle rifle, and to the right, you have the new sniper rifle, which means that within 10 tokens, which you got 20 for buying the battle pass, you have the new weapons, which means essentially you instantly have both new weapons. From a business perspective, I perfectly understand why they did all this, because obviously a bunch of people were just recycling their COD points and getting the battle pass that way, which you can still technically do. They're just withholding a couple of rewards from you for the fact that you aren't paying them more money. You dirty, dirty, free to play. You bought the base game and you also bought a battle pass at some point player. How dare you? Personally, I don't have the biggest problem with all of this. I do think it is a little silly and I do wish that if they are asking the price of either an indie game or half of their own game that they would 
and also I'm talking about a fancy in the game, that they would ask or that they would actually put in some more unique mechanics, some kind of challenges to those skins or some kind of, you know, extra bonus activities to do where right now the only thing it really does is just give you an extra skin whenever you unlock a skin that has a black cell, which is the battle pass uh, version of it, which is a little boring. Essentially, I want them to either go all the way or just don't do this type of thing. It is just kind of half arsed right now, which does perfectly describe everything Call of Duty does because they do always want to kind of play it safe. You know what other game is playing it safe? Battlefield's mid-season update, of which I made a video that you can see right here. See you later. Bye.